Right, welcome guys. Today I've got the man George James from Matipo Landscaping, luxury landscape design. And the tagline is we don't do boring. So by definition, George, you must be quite exciting. I'd like to think so anyway. I don't know. That's what my mom, <laughs> that's what my family tells me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, mate. Thanks for coming on. No, no, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Mate, it's cool. I was excited to have you on because like, listening to your story and so you, you built up a decent following on Instagram and the business looks like it does some really nice work. So to begin with, just tell us a little bit about like what you do and, and what what Matipo Landscaping actually is, really. Uh, so we, we're quite a small boutique. I'll just throw like little words out there that I like to use. But yeah, quite, quite a small boutique luxury landscaping company. Um. I'd, we do like to focus on sort of one-off designs, yeah. You know, do, doing things slightly differently in the outdoor living space. Um, I guess like pr pros and cons to that, but um, yeah, like like to focus on on yeah, do, doing things dif a little bit differently. Um, we have we have sort of narrow, narrowed down our, our niche a little bit over, over the past few years, like materials and things like that. Yeah, but um, but yeah, make that. I'm already rambling, but um, yeah, pretty much <clears throat> small, small boutique luxury landscaping company. Yeah, uh, we, like we nice do, design stuff. Is yeah, really yeah, cool. Yeah. So we do do like the three D design, computer aided walkthrough, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well. cool. So um, it's the, the big full on project. Wow factor basically is what you guys are doing. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to think so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, that's good. So, where did you actually? like start George what, what actually made you get into landscaping um yeah I guess I'll, I'll go right to, back to the beginning so it was a bit bit of a mad upbringing like from from my old man's job we moved around quite a bit so I, I left the UK when I was seven and then <clears throat> sort of grew up in in Tokyo in Japan so I was there for like nine years and Tokyo then, wow yeah, yeah so yeah I would love to go there I'd it's love really to go cool, to Tokyo man. Yeah, it's like a super unique culture. Obviously, I've not been back for years, but um, yeah, yeah, super unique culture. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Cool man. Um, so yeah, it was yeah super lucky to have those experiences at a young age. I think you don't fully grasp it when you when you're young. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's only been like as I as I've grown a bit older, I've realised how mad it was. But, yeah, um, that, that is cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, so it was awesome. Um, and I think maybe I do get a bit of like some of the design inspiration and stuff from from those experiences as well yeah so it's nice to sort of draw upon that um and then we then i was in hong kong for three years i've always got to i don't know if the years always add up but this is what i think it is in my head yeah yeah and then i was in hong kong for three years and then um then i then i ended up moving myself to new zealand so i was there for like nine years um cool so this explains the, the twang and the accent mate you've yeah been, yeah yeah you've been so all over always, the place yeah i should always prefer <laughs> yeah a bit of a mongrel accent it's, yeah, a bit of a, <laughs> yeah um yeah so, so i was in new zealand and i just yeah started like so i'd never really like seen because of those places i grew up like the trades are obviously prominent but i yeah. don't think it's as much of the like everyday culture as it is in in say england or new zealand is it not? And maybe it was the language barrier potentially. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like I yeah. never had like, um, like an uncle or, or do you know what I mean? Like that, that was quite handy or do you know what I mean? So it was, yeah, because I, really I suppose it. UK is very much like there's someone in every family who's a, a tradesman, isn't there? Yeah it's, yeah, a, it's a stereotypical thing. Like get a trade in the UK. Yeah, like yeah. fall back on a trade, and it's like someone somewhere's done it part of their life somewhere along the yeah. line so what what's it like in new zealand then it, how would how would like tradesmen and construction as a whole rated are they are they like low people or are they higher people than nah, the I'd, UK say they're quite, I'd say they're quite high probably higher than the uk as well really um, yeah yeah so like the building industry again maybe it's just my perspective i guess i've got like yeah limited perspective but um yeah, I'd say, yeah, especially in the building industry, I'd say that's quite quite a, like, respected trade. So, like... It, it is a lot, you know, in different countries, because my perspective, UK is, is always treated, if you work on the tools or you're in a trade, you're you're sort of looked down on a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Where actually you're, you're a very skilled 
person, very hard working, generate a lot of jobs and good for the economy, um, and take a hell of a lot of responsibility on. But it's looked yeah. down, at, you know, and it's not it's not given the credit that I think it actually deserves for what yeah. the industry is. So that's that's interesting to learn that is about different countries. Yeah, no, I t- I totally agree. Like it's strange if you're like a uh like a i don't know like a duty manager at starbucks like if you have some title yeah to like put you ahead of yeah of the trades even though like you said like it, it's an all-consuming job and even financially you it is quite beneficial like you know you know what i mean like you can get ahead of yeah um, definitely the, yeah 100%. more of those like corporate corporate jobs as well 100 um, percent. yeah yeah so but yeah that was quite interesting but yeah so in new zealand it, it's I'd say it's much more highly respected. Um, like when I, yeah, it's a bit, a bit of a mad story, but when I started, I was like picking apples and cherries, olives, uh, working on farms. Yeah. I just like fell in love with the like manual labor aspect of it. Yeah. Like outdoors yeah. And, and working really hard. Um, yeah. I just, I just fell in love with it. So I don't know if that was cause I've like ne- not really been, been exposed to it in the past. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just I, I think there's there's something actually about doing a good day's work. Yeah, like I think it, it, it's good for the whether you say it's good for the soul or you know not being too deep or anything. But you know, it's like some people need to do a fucking good day's work to like wake them up yeah, a bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it's yeah, yeah, good yeah. for you, isn't it? It's, it's a yeah. good thing. And anyone listening to that will, will know what I mean by that. That you always feel like you've achieved something because you've done a good day's work. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I think that's like. I guess like after years of doing it, it's just like ingrained in you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm jumping all over the place now, but I had, I had a recent experience sort of like doing some marketing work in an office. Right. Okay. And like it just, I couldn't do it. Could not. Like it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, just felt out of sorts completely. It's out not of for you. Yeah. So you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're, a, you're a tradesman really. You're a, you're a grafter. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. So, yeah. so I fell, it fell in love with that aspect of it. Um, was working on farms, forestry, like pretty much any manual labor based thing I, I sort of yeah. did over there. I was also like living off grid. So I had a managed to save up and I bought like a, a an old bus and turned it into like a house bus with like solar panels and all that sort of stuff. Oh, cool. So you're a bit of a hippie. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At heart, I guess. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I was like living off grid, d- doing all that sort of stuff um and then my missus at the time I think got a bit sick of that lifestyle and a an opportunity for an apprenticeship came up in the capital city in in yeah in New Zealand and it was yeah for landscaping okay and I was like so naive at the time like I so we we moved up like sold up whatever moved, moved to the capital city that's where her family was based and um I remember at the job interview I like asked him like what um like what brand of of like brush cutters and like chainsaws and like even in my head at the time it was like the maintenance side of things like that's what yeah. landscaping is do you know what I mean yeah yeah I had no idea like it's like all the aspects of construction you know deck building external building all that sort of stuff yeah so yeah so I ended up I got that position and to touch back on like for me to be an apprentice in New Zealand I was like so stoked like yeah, it's cool. It's an achievement. Yeah, yeah. It means like you're on your way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, worked worked with that firm for uh, I think it's probably about three years. So so trained trained up past past my apprenticeship. And over in New Zealand, it is like its own apprenticeship scheme. Okay. Um, I think I know there are some qualifications and stuff in in the UK now, but it's yeah, like, it's getting a lot better now. But yeah, yeah, yeah much better. But uh, yeah. Over there, it's sort of like side by side with like the building apprenticeship. Right. Okay. I'm an electrician, landscaper, like it's the same level of qualification, I suppose. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think, then... that's I think that's because of the earthquakes over there. So, like, right. Okay. If you're building decks, like they can't be coming down on. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes. Yeah, so there's a bit more to it than just like slap it up. That's yeah, like yeah. UK. Yeah. 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 And think, yeah. Um, yeah when, when I was young, it was like, you know, trainers there's a broom crack on no there wasn't yeah, yeah. the apprentices yeah. aren't what they're like now but it's not yeah, yeah. it's not like yeah. that at all yeah yeah exactly yeah um 
yeah so then, and then once I became qualified yeah decided to, to set out on my own so that was my first company over in New Zealand that was called Born Landscaping um, right cool yeah and the the guy who I who was like my right hand man who I sold eventually sold it to he he's still running things over there so that's pretty cool oh cool yeah so yeah. the immediate thing comes to my mind is what's the money like over there compared to over here like what is it better over there or worse there for any money in, in that sort of I'd say better probably really yeah but I think I was quite lucky I was in like quite a unique niche like um so it was called Bourne Landscaping because I was based in a little like seaside town called Eastbourne. Okay, cool. Um, and again, this is like my, my missus at the time. That was where her family was based. Um, yeah. So geographically, like the capital city of Wellington is like around one side of the bay. And then yeah. Eastbourne is like a little village sort of around the other side. Okay, cool. So like quite, quite high end clients i suppose yeah affluent area decent yeah, people yeah. yeah a good place um, to be but because it was such a small village like there was no landscaper in in that area do you know what i mean okay so you had your own little patch really yeah yeah, yeah literally and so then once you build that trust up it's like that the whole village was yeah that was the go-to really do you know what referral I mean? yeah referrals come in yeah, yeah. off you go yeah okay. yeah exactly cool. so i think i was quite lucky well i was definitely lucky in that in that sort of in that market yeah but i'd say yeah overall the money was probably a bit better again maybe because of the base level entry like to be qualified um it is a bit more respected yeah um like fences and decks over there are like much more high end i'd say right okay so like, you do, a you do get them over here but it's like you know definitely a certain type of client yeah okay um, no, a lot sense. of it here is like four by two on like block pavers in the mud do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, just, um, just box standard shit. Yeah, 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 yeah I get yeah. that. Um, so, so what made you, if you set up over there? What made you like sort of sell that business on then to your right hand man and then come come to the UK? Um, yeah, so I, I guess it's all part of the story, you know what I mean? And it's in the past now, but um, from like setting up setting up the business, um, I sort of maybe fell into into the wrong crowd. Uh, or like people that I looked up to who had like successful forestry and trade businesses. Yeah. So I fell into that crowd. And a part of that at the time was like, uh, I guess like <laughs> quite a lot of like drug use, I suppose. Um, okay. So I sort of, I sort of fell into that, like obviously running the business, working, doing everything. Yeah. But um, yeah, it just sort of, sort of got, got on top of me at, at, at one point. So it was like a couple of years in that sort of lifestyle, I suppose. You know what I mean? Okay. And I think it is definitely like quite prominent over there. Um, common everywhere, George. And yeah, well, yeah. To be honest, I'm, I'm glad you've gone there because, you know, for the people listening to this, we spoke about this before we hit record and you were a bit like, oh, do I talk about that? Do I not? And I said to you, look, I think because it's so common in construction and I've got a lot of experience of talking to people that do a lot of drugs, drink, you know, whatever, every, you know, vices, whatever your label you want to give, give to it. It's really common in our industry. And I just think it's such a good thing that you're talking about it. And we're talking about it on here today because someone listening to this might be that person who's abusing themselves, maybe a little bit too much, yeah. um, which can be a trap, but obviously your, you know, your story is, you know, you got into that and then you got out of that. So I think, us going into that it might just help someone that we don't know but we've done a good thing for the, for the purpose of this conversation so if you don't mind George, what did you actually get into like what drugs were you actually like getting into uh so it was like a lot of like amphetamines okay um yeah over there like methamphetamines is a big one um, okay it's got cool. it's like it's completely different like drug cultures and stuff do you know what i mean yeah um, yeah yeah that that was the main one um and so i think a lot of it was like just you you trick yourself that it's like a benefit do you know what i mean yeah so you you feel like you're doing more or can do more yeah um, you're always chasing it aren't you it, it's a constant yeah, yeah. chase yeah and i think i think what's really important to point out is that drugs are fucking everywhere yeah like honestly you know 
you can go to certain places in the city of London, all the financial offices, there is more cocaine in there than fucking anywhere. Like yeah. solicitors are on it, doctors are on it. It is rife. Now, it doesn't make it right, but what I'm saying is it's not like a low-end thing of construction people alone. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a problem that's across the board, whatever industry you're in, however, what good job you're in. But the issue is, and, and one thing I said to you off, off the line is, it's a vice that you're searching for something that you never find. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And, you know, it, it's like anything. It's, it's never as good as your first buzz. And you, you're trying to find it. You're trying to find it. And what you're starting to say there is you, you, you start doing a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. And before you know it, you're fucking out of control. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's not a good place to be. So you, you've done well to come the other side and, and get out of it as well. So what, what was that sort of like, George? Because at some point, a, a switch gets flicked and you go, I can't fucking do this anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what was that for you? Yeah, so like, like you said, it was just like building. I, like clients didn't couldn't even tell. Like the the girl I yeah. was with at the time didn't even know, couldn't tell. Um, it's it's weird. Like I don't know how to explain it. Like I wasn't getting sloppy or anything, but like mentally, it was just getting crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But yeah, it just reached a point. Um, oh yeah, I'll just tell. I'll just tell or whatever. <laughs> so it just reached a point like the that it did. It did sort of come out, so people around me knew. Um, my okay. partner at the time like moved out, and so I was sort of just like left to my own devices. So so it sort of ramped up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And then there was a point, like uh, literally, a voice in my head was like, "If you if you do that, you, you're literally going to die." Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like some okay. something just triggered. It was like, if you do that, you're gonna you're gonna die. Yeah. Um, and then that was it, really. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Just, and like, I think I think that's good. You said that, George, because unfortunately, some people hear that voice, or like you, you're gonna die, you're gonna kill yourself, yeah. and they can't they can't stop, they can't get off it, and this this isn't just applicable to drugs. This is applicable to like drink, yeah. food as well. You know, people have different ways of dealing with things, right? And but it, it it's such a skill set to be able to just like recognize that this is not doing me any good. I need to stop this fucking shit. It takes a lot of strength to do that as well, to be honest. Um, but again, I, I just think it's so important to talk about because unfortunately, there's a lot of people that can't get control of it and can't stop. And it does finish their fucking life. Yeah. So it's a very real thing. Um, and the more you get experience and you know the industry as well, like the the suicide rate in construction is three times higher than any, any other industry. I said it before and other things. And it, but you say that, and some people like take it in and don't really register it. But three times higher, like it's yeah. a major thing, right? There's a lot of young men, a lot of young blokes like us, right, who take their lives because. The knock-on effect of drug use is the financial implications, isn't it? Mm. It's it's where you get the money to do that, and, yeah, and some yeah. people will go to desperation to spend every penny. Um, and once you run out of money, and you got you got people chasing you for money, you owe them money. That's when it all starts collapsing on you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know if things got that bad for you, but that that that's what happens. And then that's why people only see one way out, and they're like, I just got to end this and finish it. Yeah. So. I mean, really, mate, like kudos to you to actually like stand up and go, I've got to change something. Like you did that yourself. So you should be proud of yourself for doing that in the first place. Um, so really, it's like, I'm interested to know what, what was your next steps then when you had that sort of conversation in your head? What did you sort of do next? Um, it was it was like a mad time. It was probably like the maddest time of my life in in a sense, like... I think all I think I think we we touched on this like in the beginning. So I guess like certain people might have like an addictive personality per se, yeah, or or are more drawn to those types of behaviors maybe. Yeah. So it was like once I once I stopped that, I was I was super lucky because I had a business. Yeah. I think I'll be honest. Like I think it it'd probably be hard if you didn't have something to like just throw yourself into yeah um and 
at the same time i was like getting into like self-improvement and, and stuff like that as well cool um good yeah so i, I like i'm trying to remember like the timeline the timeline exactly but yeah stopped and then and then started like discovering people like jordan peterson and at the time like gary v um cool just like self-improvement stuff really yeah so like I, th I think I, I probably had like some of the drive left over just from like the years of like abusing myself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I think the self-improvement thing is massive. Like I'm a big fan of that because you can learn, you can learn from a lot more experienced people Yeah. in a fraction of a time. You know, you, you read a book and people look at it and it's like a 12 pound book. But you, you're literally learning someone's view on their whole career, life yeah. experience, in a matter of you know cut 100 pages whereas again that's another thing uk wise is like oh fucking bookworms read but like who yeah, reads yeah. a fucking book that's how i grew up that's what it was like for me at school yeah it was really if you read a book you're a wanker yeah whereas yeah. now older i love it i love learning from 60 year olds 70 year olds that have done a lot of like clever shit yeah and you get to learn that and i think that was one of the drivers of doing this podcast really is melt as well because i didn't have the youtube and shit when i was growing up Whereas, wow, I wish I did, because you can learn from people all over the world. Mm. You never would have met them before. Yeah. And someone will be listening to this, you know, somewhere completely different in the world or the country. We, we've both never met, but they'll get something out of this and, and vice versa. So it, it's just such a great thing, isn't it? But I've always said, like, the best investment you ever make is yourself. Like, the better you get yourself, the, the better business you're going to run, the better relationship you're going to have with people. Yeah your whole life is going to be better if you're better and people are quite quick to try and fix other people's shit. Whereas I'm, I'm yeah. a big fan of get yourself the best you can be first and then you can help a lot more people. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Mm. Um, so I, I pretty much, I guess like change like one obsession or addiction, like however you want to phrase it to, yeah. to another one. Yeah. But it was just like, I Good guess yeah changing it from from a negative yeah negative actions to positive actions yeah so i was like obsessed I'd, I'd like wake up at half four i had like all these hills behind my house yeah like <laughs> run up the hills with my dog come back do my paperwork like i was obsessed and i'd like work until like 9 p.m like my eyes would literally be closing go cool. to bed and i just do that again and just like, yeah. keep, doing it, keep doing it we were getting like bigger and better jobs in um yeah it was awesome really it was like an awesome moment of clarity as well um, and uh, that's also when i so when i was like researching at the time like it, he's not as much of an influence now but at the time like this guy called gary v he's like big yeah. in america about marketing and all that sort of stuff yeah definitely <clears throat> and because of my time out in the bush i was a bit like internet illiterate like I honestly didn't know about Instagram, didn't know about anything. So I bought these books. Yeah, cool. About like how to market on Instagram and like how to do social media. Yeah. And then just just got obsessed with it. Um, started doing stories and like videos and like probably too much, but it was almost like therapy as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um. So so from that experience, that showed me like the value of marketing and social media and, and putting yourself out there and. 100% it's uh it's an underutilized tool yeah. and it's another thing with the industry as a whole it's quite a dinosaur industry and I think we're in a pivotal time now where there's a lot of younger people owning businesses in the industry whether it's landscaping electrical plumbing yeah you know you name it and they're starting to use social media and they're growing a lot quicker than the generations before yeah yeah because again construction is very much a like the fuck is that you know what i mean they look at a phone they go well, you, yeah, yeah. you don't get paid by the phone and you're like yeah, you yeah, fucking yeah. do these days it yeah, is yeah, yeah. it is mental yeah so it's, it's pivotal and you you've built quite a decent following online now as well haven't you yeah so um it's crazy like how the stories like worked out and all that sort of stuff so like during yeah. that during that moment of like going for it and starting social media and build, building that first business in new zealand I was like obsessed with like journaling and writing goals and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And I just had this like moment of clarity, like, like I could get the suppliers to like pay me 
instead of me paying the suppliers so i could get them to pay me yeah okay what you know once i get enough exposure and yeah yeah my idea was like free materials or whatever yeah so like that was my goal and like or one of my goals and that was sort of what i was pushing for but um, okay. But yeah, yeah, my, my time in New Zealand sort of like ran its course and um, was sort of understood as well, like the, the value of family as well. Do you know what I mean? Like I think all, all those years I'd been over there by myself, I'd sort of pushed family aside a little bit. Okay, um, yeah. And then, yeah, decided to, to move, move back to the UK. And then that's when I s- set up what we all know now as Matipo Landscaping and Design. Um, Matipo, yeah cool but I, I already had all those lessons that i'd learned in my previous business about marketing and branding and do you know what i mean yeah so you you, you came with quite a tool a tool set of not the tools to do the job but the tools to run the business of i.e the marketing yeah and how to do it properly and all that type of stuff that's yeah. what you, you you came with yeah so that's quite a good starting place to have all that start yeah. again really isn't it yeah i think it could be yeah. like obviously you need to be skilled on, like it was a really steep learning curve to go from the New Zealand style of predominantly like timber and concrete based features again, because yeah. of the earthquakes. Yeah. So I'd never even seen like a slab of sandstone. Like I didn't even know. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you had to learn. That yeah. Yeah. From the start, so again, really. like, thank God for YouTube. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you can find out anything now, can't you? you yeah, can literally, yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. nothing that's not on Google now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's also, I think as long as you have that high standard, yeah you, like it you, you can literally learn anything you know what i mean um yeah so it was a steep learning curve like to learn the on the tools type of things but yeah. having yeah. that marketing card in your back pocket is so valuable <clears throat> um, how, how important would you say marketing is george to a business now i'd say it's again as long as you've got the, the standards do you know what i mean it, with your work yeah i'd say it's probably i'd say it's the most important to be honest yeah I, i'd agree it, I, I always say to people that the best known just beats the best yeah and that's just yeah. how it is yeah. like you yeah. could be the, the absolute best but if no one knows you and can yeah. buy from you it, it's it's irrelevant your skill set you're actually better off being a an eight out of ten skill set but a 10 out of 10 marketing and you'll, you'll have yeah. a much bigger yeah. better business and you'll earn money so it's i think people need to get their heads around that that the more people that know you, it just just by actual fact, the more people that can actually buy from you and, and yeah. be a customer. Simple as that. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And the reach that you can get with social media nowadays is is insane. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm like sort of jumping all over the place a bit because because we've had we've had a recent move to down south to North Devon. Yep. So I'm sort of like setting up again. Yeah. And yeah, the, the value in the marketing is insane. So like we've only really technically if I was like figuring out a few things last year, working for different firms, even got a social media marketing position, um, was doing all sorts, a bit of soul searching, I suppose. <clears throat> um and I think that's key to touch on George as well, because not everyone will know that you know, you told me offline that you you got to a point where you actually started falling out of love with the industry a little bit. Yeah. And again, that's a really common thing. Like it's, it's a massive thing. A lot of people get to the stage and they think, fuck this. I'll go and, I'll go and get a job for someone else. You know, yeah, yeah. I know people that live like that for 20, 30 years because it, it's a demanding industry. Like it is a tough job and it does make you think and question it sometimes. If you're not quite getting the, the results you want, you're working physically hard. Yeah you're you know you especially you're working outside a lot of the time in the uk which is not fucking great yeah chasing payments people don't pay you from time to time clients mess you around labor is difficult there's a lot of things against you in construction but i'm not saying that to be negative there's a lot of fucking good things as well but i i do understand is what i'm saying is why some people go you know what i can't fucking be asked for this like there's got to be something a bit more better out there. It, it's yeah. not not inhuman to think like that. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So I guess I'll, I'll touch on that. So with with the move to Stafford, like it it took like three and a half years, but I was like literally, I think that same drive I had, like from getting sober and all that, 
was just literally doing seven days a week, crazy hours on the tools and then all the marketing as well. Yeah. Um, and it took me a while as well to like develop like pre-qualifying questions for like estimates and things. like. So like my weekend summer in the beginning, I'd do like 10, 20 estimates and then you got to type them up. And do you know what yeah. I mean? It took, it took yeah. me a while to like get Which to Which you it. have to when you start, yeah, yeah. you've got to, haven't you? You've, you've got yeah. a quote, you've got to quote everything. Yeah. So it yeah. took me a while to like develop different structures and processes. And, but yeah, yeah. so I, I literally just worked myself to death effectively. Like you said, lost the love for it a bit. Yeah got an opportunity to do some work for some family down south and was using that as a bit of like a a like, break yeah a bit of a break yeah yeah and, and figure yeah. out what I wanted to do um like you said I was like fuck this like, there's got to be easier ways to make money or do you know what I mean it was like yeah so I did try I did try work for some other companies some awesome companies like nothing but positive things to say about them but um it's just it's just not the same as like doing your own thing and i think being your own boss yeah 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 and being being able to be creative as well i think mm. um for me i get a lot of satisfaction out of the, out of the creative side of things yeah um, and i think maybe for my personality type as well like it's good for me to have something i can like like throw myself into like yeah. I, I, there's never like nothing to do when you're running a business there's always something 24 7 yeah yeah literally and i think yeah it doesn't if, go anywhere yeah if you think you've got nothing to do like you're just not thinking hard enough like there's literally you know what i mean like yeah absolutely yeah, yeah especially with the internet like there's all sorts of shit like my brain just comes up with you know what i mean like oh well we're doing youtube or then there's like amazon associates program where we can list the links of the tool do you know what i mean it's just yeah like, definitely not, not yeah non-stop so i think for my personality type that that's good um yeah sorry i'm jumping all over the place but i think i think if someone is in that position where they're like sick of it or um thinks they're done with it mm. it's hard at the time like because i was in such a negative headspace i was like i'm done fuck this i sh shut the google page shut the facebook sh luckily i kept the instagram and just like changed it to to my name for a bit yeah but literally like th threw it all away like all the all the goals i'd set in new zealand of like getting sponsors and youtube channel and like reach those goals surpassed them but then it'd like not be, not been implementing the right sort of structure like taking breaks and ha having other interests and things like that you know what I mean what do you uh, think was the root cause George of you you reaching your limit like what do you think it actually was for you to actually go I can't be fucked with this anymore I think just overwork like I like I love I love working hard but I think like after like years so I think it was the the last so the only time we'd have a break would be Christmas yeah and I remember the so we, we had Christmas break and then went back to work and I remember in February I think it must have been like 2021 so in, I remember in February I was like fucked again. I was like done burnt out yeah and then had the whole year to go again and like with with weather and like covid suppliers every job would like run over do you know what i mean just okay. just, just the way the industry was back then as well and yeah you might see how good how good your work is then they're always adding extras on yeah it's obviously i've learned my lesson now but it's obviously better to do the extras while you're there so then that's pushing the next client back next client back next client back and I felt such a commitment to the clients whereas now if you just communicate properly just say yeah this job has ran over you're next but yeah. I need a week to yeah to recoup to prepare you're going to get a much better result like do you know what I mean but I was like so committed and and like almost felt guilty for making these people wait so yeah there's there's a couple of key things you said there, George. One, one, the working hard thing, which if you work in, in construction as a whole, that, that's like a level one to the game. Like you've got to work your tits off and work hard to yeah. get anywhere. Yeah. But the problem is you, you can't wear it like a badge of honour and work seven days a week, all the hours, because no one can sustain that. that that's yeah. not a, 
that's not a, a weakness. No one can do that. Like if you look at really high end athletes, you know, the, one of the biggest parts of their training is, is their recovery to be able to perform like basic humans need time away from work to be able to perform at your best. And yes, there are times when you have to put a shift in to get something done Yeah, because we're always building something physical and shit happens and stuff does go wrong. That's yeah. part of the game, isn't it? Yeah. But you can't do it all the time. And that's where a lot of people get trapped. And that, that's when you just start, your mind just starts collapsing on itself because you yeah. just think it's not fucking worth it for the money yeah. that you're getting. Yeah. Um, but the second point there is really understanding and knowing what to do, like from the business side of things of how to deal with those things, like things that do overrun. Communication is a key thing you just mentioned there are words to the clients. And these are all skills that aren't actually taught yeah and this is the thing that you know these are things i had to learn the hard way in the in the beginning but they're not taught because you're taught the physical doing bit the the getting the work done yeah so then when you get all these problems come at you you're thinking fuck i've got to do this i've got to do that it's another layer of shit to deal with yeah and when you don't know what you're doing it's another thing the, the anxiety levels start going Vroom. and then you're looking for escapism yeah. and then you go for the, the fucking drink the drugs it's a vicious yeah. fucking yeah. circle yeah so it's, it's it's major problems that need to be addressed but i'm just bringing it up because it's very common mate it's, it's not unique to you there's a lot of people that do this yeah. Something like that. that yeah really is. um yeah like you hit you hit the nail on on the head like the the mental like what your own mind starts doing to you do you know what I mean? yeah and the, yeah. the first the first few years i'd be like knack and I'd, I'd have a voice in my head like just keep going just keep going just keep going yep but then at a point, like you wake up and you're like, I don't want to fucking keep going. Like, do you know? What yeah. I mean? But like, yeah. you have to. Like, you just. Yeah. And my advice would be like, if 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 anyone is at that point, like, don't don't like throw the toys out the pram like I did. Like, if you want to try something new, keep, yeah. keep your Google page, keep the Facebook page. You know, like change a few things. Like maybe just say fully booked for the year or what? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because you yeah. never know what what might happen in future, or you might change your mind or whatever. But for me, I was literally so done with it. I was even like planning to like move back to New Zealand, just go live in the bush again with my rifle. Just have a peaceful life, I'm yeah. Like done then. But then, so, what? So, yeah. My thing to that, George. I, I just want to touch on it because I think it's important for for you and people to listen to is that again, it's another form of escapism, like moving away or trying something new. Because yeah. Yeah. I know a lot, a lot of people do this in trades as well. They'll go from one trade to the other, to the other. You're looking for solutions that aren't going to be there. It's about conquering yourself as a person yeah. to be able to handle it. Because what, whatever industry you're in, whatever job you're in, if you don't handle it right, it will get the better of you. Like even if you're a fucking nurse, you know, or a paramedic dealing with some horrible stuff. Mm. We as people, if you like, regardless of the industry, you've got You've got to learn to compartmentalize and, and separate time. Yeah. And one of the things that I found has been really good for me was actually just having some alone time when completely on your own. Mm -hmm. Now, some people listen to that and they think that's fucking weird or, you know, fucked up, but it's not. It's sometimes you're sitting on your own with, without your phone as well. Yeah. Yeah. And just a complete shut off for an hour where no one can contact you and you can just have a break because you, you fucking need it when you run a business. It, it's hard. It, and it, that's why it's not for everyone. Yeah, yeah that's why a lot of people sometimes i envy some people who just they're quite happy in their nine to five and that's all they want from life yeah sometimes i envy it but then I, i'm like fuck me i couldn't think of anything worse but yeah. i understand why most people are like that because it's just easy street you know yeah no absolutely um i wish i wish we'd had this conversation like a year ago mate um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, it's here now, mate. You can listen yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, well. no, exactly. <laughs> no, it's awesome timing. Um, because that that was me. Like, I reached that point. Like, oh, I just, I just want the easy life. I just want a nine to five. I just want, like, I, my, I was so like, like I, my brain, whatever, was so over it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That, that I like tricked myself into thinking that, and so that that was sort of last year for me was like doing a few different things and then I'd get offered more money somewhere so then I'd jump jump over there or be like oh maybe I maybe I don't actually want to do landscaping maybe I do just want to do you know marketing in an office or yeah but yeah. like 
I guess like I'd had enough break or I think the answer was always there, but I was just sort of all over the place. But um, yeah, now, now I've sort of restarted everything. Yeah. It's so, it's so clear. Like this is what I want to be doing. Good. That's what I love doing. Do you know what I mean? Um, cool. Yeah. But I think, yeah, like you said, take, taking those breaks is so important. Um, I was like a different person. Like I just wouldn't, wouldn't take a break, you know? And I think because, because of phones as well, it, it's always like, there do you, know, yeah. do you know what I mean like you finish work you do a post then people are commenting and you don't want to like be rude or yeah. people asking questions and and I guess the type of work we were doing was quite detailed so we would get a lot of questions um, yeah yeah so it was almost like running like two or three different jobs at the same time so like on yeah. site then obviously all, all the business running accounts then the whole social media side of things but um I think that's what you've got to do but like you said compartmentalizing your time it's definitely the lesson i've learned now so the weekends i'm trying to i think it's impossible not to have something to do on the like work-wise on the weekends it, it never stops and yeah. I, I think what when people have never had a business or you know earn their own money or you know even if you're just like self-employed if you like it, it never goes away like even if you're not physically working it's your headspace all the time yeah. And it's a common thing. You'll speak to a lot of business owners that they're out with their family. I, I still do it all the time. You're there, but you're not there. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, you're not present. You're, you're somewhere else. Your mind's on something else you've got to do or deal with. And it's, it is, it's, it's hard. It's hard to get right and, and learn what works for you. Um, but again, that's what I always come back to. Like, that's where you've got to work on yourself and your own mental capacity and, 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 and time things and, and, you know really organize your life and get you in a best position to deal with it as well yeah because otherwise it that's when it gets on top of people it's yeah. it's a bit like um you know when you've got a really messy house yeah you can't be calm yeah, like, yeah because there's just shit everywhere yeah like it just bothers you and you might not know it but subconsciously your mind's going fucking hell it's a shit hole in here yeah yeah whereas when you're in a clean happy place you're yeah. just like oh fuck thank fuck and that's the biggest thing with it in terms of like business as well is like getting systems in place you know you touched on it earlier having systems for weeding out clients so you're not chasing your tail all the time yeah. having a way of dealing with extras and all this type of stuff it, it all adds up and before you know it you've got a, a more manageable life yeah yeah no absolutely and i found like little things like it's like last year I started getting into the gym and i've like continued that now into running the business so like that's like yeah an hour, hour and a half you could be doing work stuff do you know what i mean but it's yeah. like if you if you put like your health and and whatever um as a priority as well then it's a million like, percent yeah, yeah. So that that's like that time at the gym or, or running like whatever whatever people want to do um, yeah million percent i think yeah you know the, with the mental health thing the, the the more physical work you do like not not graft and work but like physical was in going to the gym looking after yourself yeah, yeah. the stronger your mind then becomes and i've said this all the time I've, I've been a big fan of it my whole life is that you cannot operate the best as a person if you don't physically look after yourself yeah and that doesn't mean being a fucking bodybuilder or being shredded or you know having a set of abs yeah. or whatever it just means that you do something for you and you get your head in the in a good place it just just works wonders i've always liked working out in the morning i think it's the best thing to do yeah, yeah, first yeah, thing yeah, yeah. sets yeah. you up for the day you know and, and off you go and you're great it's, it's a positive thing to do yeah and i think if you are on the tools it's a lot easier to do it in the morning than after work oh definitely like yeah and like yeah. you finish work and then you're like done to some regard yeah exactly but, um, but it is hard like i try and get it in super early so like i'll wake up at five yeah yeah I'm similar. Tea, have a little protein shake try and get to the gym yeah good man like, that's that's not easy like it's fucking up like, none, none of this shit is easy <laughs> this is the thing you know i'm saying it and go this is what this is how you should do it but yeah yeah it's not fucking easy that's the point yeah 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 and again it comes back to being the person to be able to deal with doing the hard shit yeah so that your life's easy there's it's just reminds me of an expression it's um hard hard choices easy life yeah e easy life hard uh i fucked that up hard choices easy life 
easy choice is hard life. So if you was, yeah. what that means, if you was going for the shortcut, you always take the, you know, I'll do that tomorrow. That it yeah, builds yeah. up and compounds, and you yeah. end up in a worse position overall. Yeah. Um. So th that's always been my view: is like, do do the shit you need to fucking do today. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, and because a lot of the time it's like little five minute jobs, and you keep putting it off. But but when you actually do it, you're like, fucking, that was like five minutes, two minutes. Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah, I'm jumping on, but yeah, writing lists as well is like a, a lifesaver for me, eh? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I, I, I still do that. As well. Yeah. Um, like if you have heaps going through your head, like you can, it really fucked up my sleep or it used to. Yeah. So then I'd keep like a notebook next to my bed and then you can literally just write down. Yeah, yeah. That's what, what, what you need to do or whatatever. And then, yeah. I, I, um, I email myself because oh, if, I, if I don't, I'll sit there thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as it's emailed, I yeah. know it's in the box, so you can fuck it yeah. off. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, it's cool. it's it's a good way, and it's but the the mad thing is because sometimes I have ideas, and sometimes I get to the morning, and you get some emails, and you, I just fucking delete them. <laughs> I go, you, you dickhead! What are you doing? <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was out of my head, so you've had a good night's sleep. But it's it's just a good way of yeah managing it. So. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good idea. Um, how do you like? Do you have do you have like a certain um, schedule, like in terms of like work and then rest, or like how how do you or do you um, just like base it on how you're feeling and you know like now from experience I know like if if I'm feeling negative towards the business, yeah, I probably need a break. Do you know what I mean? I'm quite um, I'm quite robotic now because okay. I've learned I, I've learned over time that I need to do certain things every day to keep me in a good place. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I train every day, like yeah. without fail. And the thing is, people listen to that and then they'll go, oh, I'm going to train every day then. I've, I've been, from a training perspective, I've been doing it for 20 years. Oh, so I, 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 I've got that habit built in me. And I've, yeah. I've, done, I've done the periods, don't get me wrong, of like getting in good shape, then getting fat, because yeah, yeah, stress yeah. and work gets the better of you, then yeah. losing it again. And then, you know, I got to a point um, but a year ago, I was like, I can't fucking do this anymore. I can't keep going upwards and down. And you know, you know, this is all coming from experience of doing it and fucking it up, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But I find that keeps me in a good place. I eat the same food pretty much every day. I've adapted a diet that I like and I can stick to for the rest of my life. I don't yeah. I think another place where people go wrong with that is they go to extremes, which I've done before. You've tried extreme diets, extreme plans, but they've got a window on them. Yeah. So my my view now is if if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it forever. Yeah. I, I, I don't commit to stuff unless I've got that attitude to it. And of course, things do change as life goes on. But when I make a decision now on things that I do, I'm like, could I do that forever? And if it's yes, I'll do it. So, you know, things like this podcast, because I'm now in a sort of different place of career and work and that. The podcast is something that I know I can commit to all the time because I like learning from people. Yeah. And the bigger it gets, you know, get different people on and, and all that type of stuff. But because I think on this as well, you know, you've probably seen some yourself. Some people start a podcast and then you do three episodes, you never see them again. Yeah. And yeah. it's like you didn't have your shit in order before you started. Like, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? That was me. That was me. Or like, I got to like a hundred and something, and then it's like, okay. Really? Think. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, you yeah, know. Yeah. I've stopped and started a lot of things in the past, but that is my framework now in answer to your question. Of, so that's why I don't, I don't get burnt out. I don't get, yeah, okay. I don't become disengaged with stuff because I only do stuff that I want to. And don't get me wrong, you know, I've done a lot of years of this stuff and and, yeah, yeah. and come a long way in that time. So I'm I'm able to make different decisions now to, compared to someone who's starting in the industry or younger, you know, and haven't got everything behind them, but that's how I get it to now. So that's, that's my advice to people is like, if you can't do it forever, don't do it. And okay. just decide that because doing, doing 20 things in bits yeah. is not worth a wank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas if you can fucking excel at three or four things every day, you'll be in a fucking great place. Yeah. Over time. Yeah. I think that was probably one of my main issues. Like, so I had, had the podcast, had this, had the... Yeah, it's too much. And I'd come up, so I'd be, oh, we're going to start a clothing brand and we're going to do this. And do, and I was just like yeah. all over the place, spread spread yeah. way too thin. Um, 
and so so achieved a lot but like you said it's just just not sustainable um yeah and that, that is a bit of that is an entrepreneurial mind like you because you when you go into business you've got a bit about you to because you want to make money that's why you do it you want to enjoy it but you want to make money that's the main thing but when you're geared that way you see opportunity in everything yeah yeah and the problem is again it's that same thing you, you can't do a bit of this opportunity a bit of this opportunity i've done things i've stopped i've started them um i know a lot of people as well do little, it's this fucking side hustle culture in it yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's like massive which has its place for a nine to fiver yeah yeah if you're in a nine to five and you've got all the hours and weekends to do something else great but when you've already got a business you need to maximize that fucking business before you're trying to do side hustles because you think about it logically if you've got a business and then you're trying to do a side hustle it's like well you're not putting enough into that business because yeah. that should demand all your time and focus anyway. And as a net gain, you learn a lot more from that one business rather than again trying to start something else and yeah. you know all these different stuff. Um, and and that for me is the the negative of social media is that everything's made to look easy. Yeah, like it's like everyone's a fucking dropshipping expert and a, yeah. an e-commerce yeah. expert, and it's and it's like. There are people that have had big success in that, but they've put a lot of time and money into it. Yeah. But the message is anyone can do that. And then you're going up against the likes of Amazon, John Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all these big brands. And you're like, come on, get fucking real. You're not going to build a website anymore. And it's going to be doing millions in yeah. the next year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of work goes into it. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think any of those sorts of things, in reality, it would be like two to three years of graft. It is, yeah. So if you if you're willing to put that time in, go yeah. for it. But yeah, it it's not going to be like overnight, or do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So it's just a power of focus. It's all it is. It's it's focusing on what you've got in front of you. Okay. Cool. Um, and I, I think that's a really important thing for people is that you've got to focus on your own shit, like yeah. not anyone else's shit. It's your shit. You've got yeah, to focus yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's been great over the years, like learning some of these lessons. I guess like I'm at like. The beginner stage of those sorts of lessons and you're obviously like quite a bit further from from experience and stuff um but yeah that that's why i love love your page as well like like i said when we spoke earlier like how the past year or so you've been been putting putting a face to the name and like put, putting yourself out there a little bit more yeah and you yeah, found, found so much value in in that content um like i guess it's like snippets from from a book like your book or do you know what i mean yeah yeah it is yeah, yeah. And I think the I never intended to do this shit either. This is this is what's mad, right? Yeah. Just started a page because I was learning from people that are ahead of me that I'm looking up to, and I go, right, what's the next phase for me? And it's such an important thing now to have a you know an audience, a personal brand, relationships with people, and that's that's important in business. Step one, but the more you can sort of scale that up through the power of socials, yeah. It, it's always going to pay dividends in the long run and you know I, I just started the page because I knew I had to do it I just started posting up people, people's work all that type of stuff but it's amazing you pop on and you speak a little bit about business or pricing work or you know marketing yeah. or something like that and then people go what was that hold on and then you're like I, I didn't realize it was that yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. big a deal really yeah um but it, that's what's just what's fucked up about the internet that's that, how mad it goes um <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's good and I, you know, I, I enjoy it. I think I said to you offline, it, it keeps my feet on the ground of like the front line as well, like especially like younger lads starting their business, the things you guys are going through and and how it is and that. And it's it's, it's good. It's, it's a cool thing to do. It's, it's a really, I enjoy it, to be honest. It, it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah, that's the main thing, eh? Like it becomes, it's obviously work, but it's not, if you enjoy it, it's not really work, is it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that exactly. Old, that yeah. Saying, like, if you if you enjoy what you do, you don't work a day in your life or whatever. Like I don't know if it's like if that's yeah. exactly true, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, and the, yeah, the thing with that is, there's always going to be days that are going to be shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you you've got to enjoy what you do. So, what's the what's like the next step for you then, George, in, in business and that? What, what's the next direction that you want to go in? So. Like yeah, for, for, I've fallen in love with it again. Like all, all the processes and and um, the marketing, the branding, like all, all that sort of stuff. Like meet meeting new clients, it's been awesome. Um, and I'm I'm super happy that even though I made 
looking back, like made the wrong decision of like shutting things down and and um because like we we had like sponsorships, all all sorts of stuff. And at yeah. the time, I, I, for some reason, I don't know why, I just thought it was all so easy. Like if you put the work in, anyone can. Yeah. Do this. But it's not true. Like it, it's quite hard to get where we were. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um. But I do also think like the beginning stages are also like the most exciting as well. It's, it's, um, the, it's the best time. And honestly, the, the best advice I can give to people is like, because when, you, when you're like earlier on and you're growing it, you're like, oh, I want to get here, I want to get here. It's, it's the most exciting time. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fucking fun. Yeah. Um, when it gets like bigger and bigger, you just, it just, they're just bigger headaches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it becomes a bit more boring. Whereas yeah. when you're like running around quoting jobs, you win it. No, you win, you win like your first 10 grand job, your first 100 grand job. It's like, yeah, fuck, yeah. It's, yeah. it's buzzing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then it, it sort of weans off a little bit after that and it gets yeah. a bit like, fucking hell, it's corporate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. It, go, it can go the other way. So enjoy yeah. it, mate. Enjoy so, it. Exactly. So I think that's sort of the level we got to. It was like, it was all tied into one, like achieved, achieved all these goals. We're, we're getting these dream projects, but it was all tied into like being a bit burnt out and over it. And do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. It's, like, it's been, it's been awesome. Like I said, my, my advice to, to someone feeling like that would be like, just, just sort of press pause on, on that side. Don't throw it away. Don't, you know, like I was like, I even like deleted videos, all sorts of shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, yeah. know, what, I don't know what the fuck I was doing or thinking or, but anyway, that would be my advice if someone's feeling in that sort of same situation is just press pause for a bit. Obviously, you've got to keep money coming in. Maybe try try work with someone else. Have relax a little bit, but don't yeah. don't like get rid of anything. Don't because like you said, it was that escapism. I was like, I don't want any because like we're still getting inquiries like constantly and email, you know, and I was just like, I'm yeah, done. I'm done. Yeah. Um, but my advice would be but would take a much more planned approach to it like execute things like more yeah yeah militaristic almost you know what i mean like i, I was just sort of like oh i'm done and then i've been like trying to scramble up and and like rebuild from from the business. yeah and this this is the whole thing with mindset and that is, this is what happens like you know someone can only take so much and it's like everyone's got a snapping point and the problem is once you're at that point you 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 can't make good decisions when you're in that place mentally. Yeah. Like it's impossible because you're just clouded and that's all you're thinking about. But the thing is, we've all done it. I've done it before. Um, everyone has. And I think that's another thing to point out that anyone who's got anywhere in life or anyone that anyone looks up to as successful or whatever label you want to give it, we, we've all fucked up a lot yeah. to get there. We've all fucked up a lot. And I think that's why it's good to talk about it as well. But I think one of the hardest things for people to do is actually just forgive yourself mm. is actually like look in the mirror and go, I made a mistake, Yeah. but don't let it sit on you. Cause a lot of people, it sits on them for years and they, and they carry this baggage around. Yeah. The quicker you can just look yourself in the mirror and go, I fucked up, forgive myself. Let's move on. Tomorrow's a new day. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. The quicker you can get to that place. That's a more proactive place of progress. Yeah. Rather than sitting. And sitting is not a good place to be. Yeah, absolutely. So I was I was there for a bit. I'm ob I'm obviously through it now. Like this year has been yeah yeah going for it. But yeah, like li literally everything you said was was true. Where I was like was over it, and then I was like regretting finishing it. And yeah, yeah. but yeah. yeah, the future's looking awesome. And um, like one one thing I will say is like because of the like the branding and the marketing that I did in the past even though we're setting up in, in a completely new area that arguably might even be a bit more word of mouth driven. Yeah. We're already getting like inquiries for, for full projects, full designs. Um, it, it's not like starting over from scratch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, definitely. And, and I think having like a, a good portfolio and keeping the Instagram and yeah, it's been so, so beneficial in, in like restarting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, shows you what an important tool it is, isn't it? Because you have, it, it's an asset. 
Yeah, yeah. It is an asset. Like socials, website, uh, media. You know, we said this about um, YouTube offline is that it's always there. Like someone could find like this podcast in five years' time yeah. and go, fucking hell, this is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I might say it's fucking shit, but we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, in terms of a business point of view of like you showcasing work and that, or, you know, people can find that for years to come. So it, yeah. it will pay you for years to come. So I think that's the, the attitude to have of it. But that, yeah, it, it shows you what a strength of having that social platform is because you, you've moved location in country and you can plug it back on again and start yeah. getting inquiries for where you are now. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been super interesting because I was think there was a moment where I'm like, oh, are we gonna have to start like pressure washing again? Or do you know what I mean? Like where yeah, I start, yeah, doing like, whatever you got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just it's just not been the case. Um, and then that give takes the pressure off like quoting a bit and like pricing and do you know what I mean? Like yeah, definitely. Because I think also a lot is when you start, you also have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, like to prove that it's going to be a success and that you can do it yeah so maybe you do take a couple of jobs like a little bit cheaper than you should have or do you know what i mean mind games again yeah 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 and then those like then that sort of mounts up and it compounds like over time then you're not making what you know you should be you know what i mean whereas yeah. it's nice it's nice to have like a portfolio and a brand definitely where you that- can like, you can just start off where you want to i suppose you know yeah and i think I won't open that can of worms fully because it's just respectful of time. But yeah. what you just said there as well is that a lot of people do this. They undercut themselves to, to win the job. And uh, it's a bit of a scarcity mindset. But the, yeah. the problem is no point winning a job and there's no fucking money in it. Yeah, yeah. A bit different when you need the work and you need the experience and you need to show a portfolio. Yeah, different yeah. stage of business. Yeah. But it's a fucking dangerous place to be in when you're not making money from the start. You, yeah. Good business is about making money from day, not day one, because you don't get paid like in construction, but yeah, yeah. your first job, you can turn some profit and build on that. Then you can build a good business. Yeah. But it, again, it's a mental, a mental, a mental place of, oh, I'll go a bit cheaper. People don't buy on price. And I won't fully go into it because of what, yeah, yeah. where we are with time, but people do not buy just on price. Mm. It's, it's just not done that way. Especially if someone's spending a lot of money and having something big and important in their house. Like for me, it's like if, you, if you're spending 10 grand and someone's dodgy and they, they look rough as fuck and they're yeah, ropey, yeah. or you can spend 12 grand and it's a perfect job and it's a fantastic service, everything's good. Majority of people are going to go for that. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the people that want the cheap all the time, do you really want them as customers anyway? yeah not really yeah, exactly. yeah 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 and, and they so. they always seem to be the ones that are like the most difficult to deal with as well they are they want fucking everything yeah, yeah the, the yeah. people you do favors for they want everything yeah. they're a ball lake like, to deal with yeah yeah 100 percent. so it's been super nice having that experience now like going out quoting yeah and i find like pretty quickly you can sort of tell if it's like detailed work takes a lot of effort. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's not, yeah, it's not just yeah, yeah. It's like knowing yeah. how to do it. All sorts goes into it. Yeah. So I think it you can tell pretty quickly whether like a potential client respects that aspect yeah. of the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. Um. So yeah, it's so nice to to be. I guess like technically starting up again, but with a whole lot more experience. So you can you can sort of yeah push it forward. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Good. Okay, so to sort of wrap this up, George, and bring this to a close, I always like to finish on like, for you looking back, obviously you've had a you've had a varied journey and you've been very open and talked about a lot of different things in this, which is really really good. But you looking back, George, what what would you say would be the biggest lesson that you've learned for you personally, so that someone listening to this can go, right, great, I can learn from that lesson because I always think like the best way to learn is from someone else's mistakes yeah some mistakes you've got to make yourself unfortunately but if you can if you can learn from someone else's you'll get a lot further and a lot quicker so what what would you say that is for you mate the the biggest lesson you've learned to date i think i think from from my experience like maybe some of the negative habits i've fallen into it wasn't so much like the substance or whatever itself it was more like like sort of a whole 
I was trying to fill or whatever. Yeah. And like the old, the older I've gotten, like from this year and whatever, like you can fill that with, with positive things. And like you said, like work on yourself. Yeah. And so the more, the more you work on yourself, like the less likely those sorts of things will occur, I guess. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Habits make the man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that's super general. Uh, maybe it should have been more construction based, but, but for me, like where, where I am, at this point, like I would have saved a whole lot of time, a whole lot of headache, a whole lot of upheaval if I'd have just been a bit more. Like it's it's a hard lifestyle, I think, but if you can like get into it where you are like reading, you are self-improving, you are you are exercising, you are looking after your mental health and the food, and yeah, like it is a grind in in a in a sense. It's work, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's I, working yeah, on yourself. Yeah. It, yeah. That's the thing, yeah. it's still work. Yeah. But you're working on yourself and it will pay yeah. you massively. So recently I've tried to view, maybe maybe this will just sum it up. Like recently I've just tried to view like anything that's positive to your life is work. Yeah. So like doesn't mean you have to be on site for like 12 hours. You can finish at half four and then go yeah. do jiu-jitsu or go to the gym or go fishing or do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. As long as that has like a positive impact on your life. Do you know what I mean? definitely yeah i think that's that's a good a good bit of knowledge there to share mate that's cool so where can people find you george for people listening where can they get hold of you mate where's the best place uh so yeah so pro- probably instagram so matpo landscaping on instagram uh we yep. also have a youtube channel i've been working on heaps of edits recently so hopefully get back into producing like consistent content again yeah I've uh, been quoting for some really cool jobs. We've been doing a few little, we're on like a little front entrance job at the moment. So follow along on Instagram stories. Um, cool. Yeah, so hopefully if, if there's anyone who, who's seen our old content, we will, we will be back there very shortly. Back with a Good boot. man. Um, and yeah, super, super looking forward to it. But yeah, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Yeah, that's where you find us. Cool. Good. Right, George, pleasure, mate. Thanks for coming on. Really appreciate your time. No, no, it's my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. And, and hopefully, like, yeah, if, if anyone got something out of that, um, yeah, that, that'd be awesome. And, yeah, feel, feel free to reach out, anyone, if yeah, I, know, if I can help in any way. Or Definitely. Whatever. Yeah, it's, it's good to talk. So thank you, George. Cheers, mate. No, my pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. See ya.